Hello, Data Pros, and welcome back to another exciting video in our Databricks learning series. In our previous video, we explored Unity Catalog and its standout features that make it a true game changer in the data governance space. Today, we're moving forward and exploring how to access Azure Data Lake storage from Databricks. All right, these are the four primary access methods when you need to read or write data to Azure Storage from Databricks. They're listed in order of preference, with the most recommended options at the top. For a production-grade setup, methods 1 and 2 are ideal as they ensure secure and scalable access. However, there are scenarios where a developer might need quick access, such as for a proof of concept or initial development. In such cases, methods 3 and 4 can be very helpful, but they are not suited for long-term or production use. Let's explore them one by one, starting with Unity Catalog. First, you'll need to create an access connector for Azure Databricks. Think of it as a specialized Azure resource that provides managed identity capabilities to Databricks. If you're not familiar with managed identities, here's a quick overview. Imagine you need to assign access to an Azure resource, like a storage account. Typically, access is assigned to users or service IDs. However, the main challenge with this approach is managing credentials or secrets. They are vulnerable to leakage, and they also require regular management, such as rotation, to meet compliance standards. That's where managed identities come in. Instead of assigning access to individual users or service IDs, you assign access to the Azure resource itself, like an Azure VM, Azure Function, or Azure Data Factory. For example, if you assign a reader role on a storage account to an Azure VM, Anyone with access to that VM automatically inherits the necessary permissions. This allows processes and jobs running on the VM to access the storage account seamlessly without the need to include credentials or secrets in the application code. Unlike Azure native resources such as Azure VMs or Azure Functions, Databricks does not natively support managed identities. This is where the access connector for Azure Databricks comes into play, acting as a bridge to provide managed identity capabilities specifically for Databricks. At a high level within Azure, you have the access connector and the storage location. Since these resources exist outside of Databricks, you cannot centrally govern access to them using Unity Catalog. To solve this, Databricks provides two equivalents. The first is the storage credential, which represents the access connector within Databricks. The second is the external location, which maps to the storage location. Both of these are fully governed and securable within Databricks and Unity Catalog. This setup enables centralized governance and seamless access control management through Unity Catalog. Let's go ahead and set all these up practically. First, head over to the Azure Portal homepage and search for Access Connector for Azure Databricks. Typically, when you set up a Databricks workspace, a default storage account and an access connector are automatically created. But for this demo, let's create a new access connector. It's a quick process and just requires some basic details. Once it's created, make sure to note down the resource ID. Next, we need to assign the necessary role to the access connector we just created. Head over to the Access Control or IAM section of your storage account and add a new role assignment. You can assign any role that fits, but generally, the Storage Blob Data Contributor role will give you read and write access to blob containers. You should use the resource ID of the access connector we created just before. We have completed the setup in the Azure side. Now let's head over to Databricks and create a credential. Here, simply copy and paste the resource ID of the access connector we created earlier. After that, let's move on to creating the external location. Give it a name. Enter the URL of your storage location in this specific format. And choose the storage credential you just created. That's it. The setup is complete, and we're ready to access this location in our notebooks.
As you can see, we can directly access the path, and nowhere in the entire setup we have used keys or secrets. Still, I can access the data. This is because I'm the owner of the external location that governs this path. Now, let's say another user, Karthik, tries to access this path. As expected, he gets a permission denied error. The owner of the external location has full control over who can access the underlying storage so they can grant read access to specific user. After the access is granted, let's see what happens when Karthik tries again. This time, he can access the files without any issues. This centralized access control combined with simplified application code that eliminates the need for credentials or keys makes this option the most recommended. Now, I'll quickly demonstrate the other three access methods without going too deep into the details. As we've already discussed, these methods require specifying secrets or keys within the application code. For demonstration purposes, I'll be hard coding these secrets and keys, but this is not considered a best practice. Instead, you should securely manage these secrets using Azure Key Vault, which we'll cover in our subsequent videos. Let's now talk about Azure Service Principle, the second most recommended access method. Imagine we've revoked Karthik's access to the external location and he no longer has access to the storage. Now, let's see how he can regain access using an Azure Service Principle. To use this method, you would need to include a piece of code in your notebook that includes secrets. You can find the code on the official website link provided in the video description. You'll need a few details for this. For those, please head over to Microsoft Enter ID. Register an app. Create a secret. Please make a note of this secret value because it will not be shown again. Head over to overview page and copy these details one by one. Finally, replace the storage account name in the code. By adding this code to your notebook, anyone, including Karthik, can gain access to the storage location. Before running this code, there are two more steps we need to take. First, assign storage account access to the service ID we set up earlier. Then, enable fallback mode for the external location governing this path. Once that's done, we can execute the code, and it works as expected. But keep in mind, access control is managed outside Databricks. So, whenever you need to add or remove someone's access, you'll need to head over to the storage account settings and manage roles accordingly. You'll also need to include additional code and secrets as part of your application logic. Next, let's talk about sauce tokens. Please copy this piece of code from the official website. To create a SOS token, head over to your storage account in the Azure portal. Go to Security and Networking. Then, Shared Access Signature. From here, you can customize the access level. Set start and end dates. And generate the SOS token. Once it's created, please copy the SOS token from here and paste it into your notebook. Don't forget to replace the storage account name as well. You can now integrate this into your notebook or application code. As you can see, we've successfully accessed the storage location using a SOS token. Finally, let's take a look at storage account keys. This method is pretty straightforward. Just go to the Access Key section of your storage account. Copy one of these keys. And replace the storage account name in the code. 
Now we have access to the storage account using those keys. However, please remember that the access keys provide full access to your storage account, and this makes them the least secure option, so it is not recommended for production environments. As already mentioned, it's not a best practice to hard code keys or secrets directly in your application code. We'll address this concern further in our upcoming video. That's all for today. Please stay tuned for our next video where we'll explore more Databricks topics. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay notified of our latest videos. Thanks for watching.